Some unwelcome news, I think, for a lot of us. The cost of coffee, it's getting much more expensive. Prices have shot up nearly 60% so far this year, and it doesn't really show any sign of slowing down soon. So we want to bring in Phil Striebel. He's a chief market strategist at Blue Line of Futures. Phil, it's good to see you. I know coffee is just one example because we were just talking about energy in the last block. Crude has been on quite a tear. So just help us, I guess, first make sense of some of the chaos that we're currently seeing in the commodities market. Yeah, and I could tell you that breakfast is going to get a whole lot more expensive. You got oats up 83 percent, sugar up 27, lean hogs are up 10 percent. So really, this kind of all stems from a number of different things. It was a cross between adverse weather conditions, which no one can really control that, as well as, you know, the supply chain bottlenecks, which we believe those will be eased in the next few months. Phil, when you take a look at the price of coffee up, what, just around 60 percent since the start of the year, how much worse do you think that spike could potentially get? Yeah, it could get a lot worse. And let me break it down for you, because a lot of people don't really know the story. The story goes down in Brazil. Remember, they produce about 40 percent of the world's uh, Arabic coffee. They were hit with a severe frost. And the frost was back in June, July, most likely mostly in July. Prices had rallied about 40 percent then. And the expectations were 40 percent of the world's coffee was lost at that point. The numbers came in right around 25 percent is what we're anticipating. So what we're seeing right now is the ramifications of it. Many of the trees had to be completely removed. New trees had to be planted. So you've got this serious supply strain. Now the demand is continuing to increase. So with the reopening of the economy, you've got other other areas, other markets, specifically Europe, Australia, which have still been tightly locked down. Once they reopen, cruise ships come back online and also airlines. Those are all major consumers of coffee. So the p- supply could be severely strained. And I really believe all new all-time contract highs are just right around the corner. And so, Phil, we could potentially see record prices then on the price of coffee. When you take a look at something like this happening in the past, can you compare it to anything like you've seen before? And I guess how long does it normally take to resolve? Yeah, it could take quite a while because the problem is, is that the coffee that was damaged down in Brazil, it takes about three seasons for those crops to come full back. So you're going to have to rely on other outside sources. You go over to Vietnam, they're a major producer of coffee as well. They have supply chain bottlenecks. They just can't get the product out through the ports, access shipping containers like what they need to be able to fulfill the the, the demand that's there. And I think really going into the holiday season, you're going to see another spike up in that demand. So coffee prices, again, they're just one element on this big inflation play that's going on, are going to go a lot higher. And speaking of coffee, just being one element in all this, I also want to bring attention to crude because it's really amazing what we've seen there. The rise in the price there, crude closing just above $82 a barrel today. Some fill are calling for $100 a barrel. Do you think that's in play? It could be. It's totally possible. So oil hitting a new cycle high. The demand is there for crude oil. The problem that we have at the moment is that U.S. inventories are being severely drawn down. We are not recovering on our shale production. We're sitting there right around 11 million barrels a day. We need to be back up at 13, 13 and a half. OPEC is also they're really they're really, uh, uh, you know, keeping those prices quite high. They don't anticipate bringing on any excess supply. They keep throwing out the uh, excuse like, hey, what if there's another re- resurgence of, of coronavirus of some new variant and we have to lock down again? So they're very cautious, but we all know the game that they're playing. Get prices up as high as possible. The question is, is at what price? Is it $100? Is it $90? Is it beyond that where it really starts to damage growth and we start to see the economy you know, start to throttle back? And that could mark somewhat of a top on the U.S. equities.